This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. PDF editing for your Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Learn more at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is part two in a two-part conversation with Joe Kissel about his latest book, Take Control of Big Sur. In the first part, Joe talked about some of the challenges that we will face with Big Sur during installation and the transition over, and a few things that you need to be aware of before you make that transition. This time, we talk a little bit more about using Big Sur, some of the differences in appearances, and some of the functional differences as well. Let's get back to our conversation with Joe. Um, all right, so let's go past installation and all those questions that we just talked about because, you know, you really should get the book, the, book, the book folks and, you know, look through some of this. But we've made, we've made the jump. I'm installing uh, Big Sur. So where, what are the tentpole features? Where should I start? And, to, and what do I need to know, you know, when I, to, to get my stuff done about Big Sur? The most obvious thing that everyone will notice immediately is, wow, this looks really different. It looks, it makes your Mac look a lot more like an iPad. Some people are going to love that. Some people are going to really hate it. Some people are going to just be like, but, but why? It was great before. Why? <laughs> For me, I, I don't prefer the new look, but I find that after an initial Five minutes of kind of, yeah, yeah, all right. It's yeah, the 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 ceiling's different, the walls are different, the floor is different, but it's okay. I get it. It's a room, you know. It it works. So uh, there are some things that I like less, and, and some things that I like more. But everything looks different. The toolbars of all the windows look different. Uh, most apps have sidebars now that go all the way up to the very top instead of sidebar stops here and then the toolbar is above it. So stuff has shifted around. Little little triangle, neck, like you're in a list view, and there's a little triangle that you click and it, and it turns down and stuff appears underneath it, and then you click it again and it... So that's a disclosure triangle. That's the term that Apple has used for years. It's called a disclosure triangle. You click it to d disclose what's inside, you click it again to hide it. It's not a triangle anymore. It's just, it's just one of these, you know, like a greater than sign, a carrot, it's just it's just two lines. So we're we're calling it the disclosure icon, I guess. I don't know. It's not a triangle though because it only has two sides. So there's like lots of li lots and lots of little things like that. We're just, oh well, this different. I don't know. It still works. Uh, I don't know if I like it. If I prefer it. If it's not how I would do things, but it's okay. Other things that iPad users will immediately notice is. Well, we have Control Center now. You know, on your iPad or iPhone, whatever, you uh, swipe down from the upper right corner and you get like, oh, I can turn Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and off and I can do AirPlay and I can uh, do, like there's a bunch of system settings that that, ba that basically serves as a shortcut to, instead of having to go into the settings app and dig around and find the thing, it's just like, oh, let's just go swipe down and turn this on or off. Screen brightness, volume, things like that. So now the Mac has that too. It ha it looks and acts almost exactly the same as Control Center on an iPhone or iPad. Same thing with Notification Center. It It's still there, but it, it looks and functions very differently. Now you can, um, there's, a, there's a totally different way of adding widgets and they look different and they act different. If you love your iPad and you, you want those features that you like on your iPad on your Mac too, great. There they are. There, these are some of just the most obvious visible things. They, they don't make huge changes in the functionality, but they do make a lot of changes in how the ease with which you, you get to certain features and, and, and how it looks. There are gigantic changes to Safari and a bunch of other apps, you know, maps and photos and messages, and we can talk about some of those. And then uh, I, I, there's sort of this big other category. The other category is huge. There are some like system level things. Siri does a couple of things a little bit differently. And 
uh, Game Center, you know, like, uh, sorry, not Game Center, but Apple Arcade does some things a little differently. And there are a bunch of system level things. And there's like, oh, well, Notes has these two little new features and Reminders has these two little new features. And so things that like, I, I can't write a whole chapter about what's new in Reminders. That's like two pages. So it's, I have, I have kind of a everything else chapter with, with all the little things. You might find that all the little things really add up and make you think, oh, this is, this is pretty good, it's good, good thing. But um, the real tentpole feature to Big Sur is something you can't see at all. The real, the major, most important feature of Big Sur is support for Apple Silicon. So, uh, or, or Silicon, if you were so inclined, because I, you know, it's like I'm, I'm bilingual in American English and Canadian English. So I, I, I can translate. So, uh, you can't see that yet unless you're a developer and you have one of Apple's, uh, whatever preview Mac minis that, that runs on Apple Silicon. Uh, but in a few months when we can all start buying, uh, Macs with Apple's own arm processors in them, uh, you will you will be able to see. Oh, now not only does the same operating system work, but all, all of a sudden I can run iPhone, iPad apps directly on my Mac with no modifications at all. That's going to be a really big change, but you won't be able to see that change until you can get the new uh, the new hardware to go with it. So a lot of a lot of what's biggest about Big Sur is uh, hidden. And until until we can get the new hardware, and I'm not sure that's something that has been made completely clear. I think a lot of people think that they're going to have those iOS app capabilities that they won with uh, with Big Sur, and that's just not the case. You're you're right. There that <laughs> there will absolutely 100% be a lot of customer confusion about that. But but why? I have a brand new Mac. I just bought it today and it's running the brand new operating system. What do you mean I can't use this new feature? It doesn't have the right stuff. Yeah. Sorry. The, the, Joe, these all strike me as, I mean, a lot of this, uh, if, from the, the earlier discussions of, of what you can boot from and what you can't know, these are all just natural growing pains as, as the system evolves and changes and gives you more capabilities and more security. And, of course, the designers have to get in there and tweak things a little bit because that's what designers do. And that's not a shot at designers because sometimes I, I've, I like the new design better. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm neutral and two days later I've, I've adapted. So um, I haven't heard anything that really distresses me here at all. It just means that I've got to pay a little extra attention and maybe get used to a, a new coat of paint. You know, in Big Sur, the window, okay, in Catalina, let's go back. In Catalina and, and previous versions, all the windows have rounded corners. They're not, I mean, you can find square windows, but almost all the windows have slightly rounded corners. In Big Sur, they're rounder. They're, the, the, the curvature is, is much greater. The, the, the radius of the circle is, is a lot bigger. And so you, you might aesthetically like that or dislike it. But when I look at that, I see, oh, phooey. Now I, have, now I, as a person running a book publishing company, have to go do a lot of work. You would not believe how many, many, many hours I, I had to spend dealing with this because if you have a, if you take a screenshot of a window, most window, you're not going to notice this on your screen because you have a colored background and you've got shadows and you've got all this other stuff. But most windows have at least some part of the edge and sometimes like a couple of whole sides that are totally white. So if you take a screenshot of that and you slap it on a white page, you can't tell where the window start stops and the page starts, it just bleeds in. So what we do is we put a really tiny, like one pixel thin gray border around just to separate the, the, the window from the page, just because it visually looks weird without the shadows and stuff. Well, our, our widget that I made years ago to put a border on things made the border square with, with square corners. And you can't, you can't, 
you, that won't work in Big Sur. You can't put a square corner on uh, a, 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 an image that is that has such prominent rounded corners. So I spent, I don't even want to tell you how many hours experimenting with different ways that we could have an automated process to add rounded corner, like borders, gray borders with rounded corners to our screenshots. I eventually did. And I, you know, whatever. But, <laughs> but man, what a hassle. I think that should be an article somewhere. How to, how to do rounded corners, screen, rounded corner screenshots. I experimented with a bunch of I like you know open source command line tools and I tried every image editor that I could get my hands on, yeah, Pixelmator and Acorn and uh, Graphic Converter, you know, like all all the all the ones that are that are uh, in some way automatable using Apple Script or or whatever it may be. The way I finally settled on to do it that seemed to work best for our needs was using a tool called Retrobatch. Uh, Retrobatch is made by the same uh, d the developers that make Acorn, the, uh, the image editor, but it is, uh, is, a, is a, a, a tool that automates converting graphics in, in a really just very powerful way and highly customizable way uh, that, that also doesn't require any programming. So we have a we have a tool based on Retrobatch that does that. So it's pretty neat. Hmm. I know the Take Control authors will probably be updating their specific application books for Big Sur. And but, how? Uh, yeah, but as a general as a general rule, general approach. You know, is there anything that uh, on day one of Big Sur, whenever that my day one of Big Sur is, um, that I need to pay attention to in say photos. Uh, I, I hesitate to even say the word "male" in front of you. Um, <laughs> keynote, anything else? Yeah, I'm just gonna breathe yeah. for a minute because I heard that that four letter word. Yeah, this is a family show. We don't say those kinds of words on this. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just, I kind of say, like a couple of hours ago, somebody wrote to me complaining about a bug in mail in in Big Sur. And the, the, the essence of the complaint was, well, if Joe, if you talk to Apple, I'm sure they'll listen to you. I'm sure you have lots of influence. And like, don't I wish that no, 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 I don't have any more influence at Apple than anybody, um, certainly not when it comes to mail. Otherwise, it would be working correctly now. As I look over my list of, of what has changed in, in Big Sur, most of it is new features that may not be entirely obvious to you. Oh, Messages does this new thing, and Messages does that new thing. I heard that it does, but how do I actually use that? How do I, where, where is that? It, it's not obvious to me. So a lot of what my book is trying to do, and, and what will also be the case in our other books, you know, Shelley's going to update her calendar reminders book and her Siri book, and Josh is going to update his notes book, and I, you know, all the, all the, all the stuff will, will eventually get updated. So. Part of what we're trying to do is to is to call out and exactly how do you do that new thing in Maps because I I looked and I don't really see it so where is it and how do I use that so uh, I do that at a at a very high level in in this book for for the major things so photos has some new stuff like there are some things that used to not be adjustable that now you can adjust and some of the little widgets work differently but unless you are like a photos expert and you're digging into all this stuff you're not going to notice it it's not going to affect the the way you use photos from day to day one of the things that apple had on their website that i had to just really like experiment with to figure out is uh I forget how they phrased it, but it was something like smoother zoom or words to that effect. So you're looking at a page full of thumbnails and you can drag that slider to, to zoom in or out to show more or fewer of them. Okay, that's that, that was there before, it's still there now. What's different is that it doesn't sort of go mm, 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 in steps. Now it just goes and it doesn't, I mean, the function isn't different. It just looks prettier. But Apple sort of made a big deal of making you know, like a paragraph, a bullet point about this new Zoom feature on, on their website. So 
it it looks like something sort of bigger and more impressive than it really is. What I think is going to happen with a lot of things in Big Sur, and that's just one example, is your brain not, might not even register that this is a new feature or this is different. Yeah, I remember that I could drag that slider before, and now I can still drag that slider. But some, something feels a little nicer. It just, I, I, you might not even be able to register precisely what that thing is, but I think I think you will start noticing. Ah, I, I feel a little less annoyed. This is, this is nice, you know. I think there's a lot of that in Big Sur. So, uh, to, so as as far as that goes, I'm I'm pretty optimistic about it. Big Sur, less annoying. No, that's not. That's <laughs> probably, probably not the best slogan in the world. But <laughs> this edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of world class software like PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro. Not only are many of us working from home now, but it looks like we will be, at least part of the time, on an ongoing basis. That means even less paper than before, which in turn means more PDF documents. And that means that you need the power of PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro from Smile more than ever. With PDF Pen, you can not only annotate documents, but edit them, just like a word processing document, even if the author didn't intend for you to be able to. Just run them through PDF Pen's built-in optical character recognition, and you have editable, searchable text to work with to fix typos, correct grammatical errors, or modify the content. And if you're working on secure documents, not only can you add a password to protect them from prying eyes, but you can also securely redact them so that something you don't want seen can't and won't be seen. That's a big, big feature, because just pasting a graphic over a sentence or two doesn't redact it, it just covers it up. And what can be covered up can be uncovered. With PDF Pen, it isn't just covered up, it's gone. There are so many features and capabilities of PDF Pen, way too many to list here. And even more with PDF Pen Pro. And let's not forget PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, which brings the power of PDF editing to your mobile Apple devices. Right now, go to smilesoftware.com slash podcast and see what PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro can do for you. Download a demo version and then add PDF Pen to your productivity toolkit. That's smilesoftware.com slash podcast to do more with your PDFs from Smile, the makers of world-class software. Thanks to Smile for their support of Mac Voices. Um, okay, so we've done backups. We've done... Um, I think I mean I think we've hit kind of all the major topics here about Big Sur. Anything that we've missed or that you feel like again really is important for folks to know and that they should run right out and get the book. One thing that uh, Apple has made a very big deal about is changes to Safari. So Big Sur comes with Safari 14, I believe. I believe it's 14. <laughs> Safari changes so often, and that's true. There are a lot of new features in Safari. The thing is, though, Safari 14 will also be available for Catalina and I believe Mojave too. So if you want the new stuff in Safari, you don't have to wait for Big Sur to get that. At, at some point, any of us will just be able to download it and you'll be able to get these things. So uh, Safari continues its uh, continues the, the, the privacy push. And uh, so that's good. And there are there are new features that make it harder for websites to track you. And I keep reading these articles. A lot of them are about iOS and 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 the new features there. But uh, a lot of a lot of like ad companies are you know companies like Facebook and and you know any 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 ad company or any publisher that that makes money off of ads starting to get really irritated with Apple for how hard it makes tracking customers across sites, which was always a slimy thing to do. It was always just really cheating because you have, it, it has always been necessary to sort of color outside the lines in order to do this. And nobody really wants this to happen. Nobody wants to be tracked this way. So I have. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I have little sympathy for the companies whose uh, job making money off of tracking my activities across the web is now harder. But uh, you know, that's one of the things that Safari does. Uh, 
there, you know, the tabs are different now and, you know, the favicons are on all the tabs by default. They, 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 you could have put them there before, but you had to go in and check a box. Now they're on by default and you get the little previews. So if you, you hover over, you got a million tabs open, you hover over one, you'll see a little thumbnail of what's on that page. You can, you don't have to like actually click the page to see. So that's nice. There's this new start page, which whatever. I mean, when I, when I open my web browser, I tell it what page I want to go to. I don't need a menu. I don't need to see my favorite sites, my top sites, trending sites. I, I don't care about that stuff. I never <laughs> use that. So if you like it, great. It's more customizable now. You can you can customize what appears on that start page. I I literally never see it. So but anyway, there's 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 good new stuff in Safari and kind of eh, stuff in Safari. Uh there is one other thing, and and I I I'm embarrassed that I haven't that it hasn't come up yet. I haven't mentioned it, but uh, it's the startup chime. So I I am old enough <laughs> to remember back more than five years ago when every time you turn on a Mac it goes, you know, there's a there's a startup sound, and it, it was it was a helpful thing because. Uh, if, if you're like some of the, sometimes when you have to restart in, in recovery mode or you got to, uh, zap your PRAM, you got to do something, something, one of these special things, the instructions are always, well, you restart your Mac and you hold down something, something, something until you hear the startup chime. And that tells you now you can let go. And that was useful. Uh, then, then the startup chime disappeared several years ago. Apple just turned it off in all new Macs. You, you, it, it's it's silent, and hey, silent is great if you are using your laptop in church or in a library, I guess, where that, something a very quiet environment where that sound could annoy other people. But uh, I really liked the startup sound, so. So Apple seems to have turned back on the startup sound by default, even for Macs that never had it before. Now, uh, I have seen sort of inconsistent behavior of the startup sound in various betas. It seemed to be on earlier. It's for, in some situations, it seemed to be off later. And Apple has never talked about it. It, it never advertised the startup chime is back as, as a feature. So in my book, I basically say it might be there or it might not. If it is and you don't want to have it here's what you can do to turn it off it's a little command you uh, enter in terminal if it if you don't have the startup sound and you do want it here's how to turn it on again little command in terminal so um that that might that might bring either joy or tears to a lot of people i don't know but it's it's a new thing anyhow i i, I kind of miss it because if i restart my mac Especially if I'm doing troubleshooting or if I've had an issue and all, it's like it's sort of nice to know that yeah, it did something. Otherwise, I'm sitting there looking at a blank screen. Yeah, yeah, and it this might be blank. doing yeah, it might be doing something. Might not. Better keep my hands off for a little while. And if I don't keep my hands off, then I'm starting the whole process over. And so yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear that. That's and again, you know, make it a customizable thing. Let people turn it on or turn it off. You know, whatever suits them. Because I can see certainly see a student in a classroom, you know, probably if they're restarting their machine or starting their machine, the last thing they want is a big boing, you know, right. back when we had classrooms. Um, <laughs> back when we had classrooms, exactly. Yeah, but, you know, you get the idea. So Now now I, I've suddenly realized I want to start up Chime on my iPad. Can I have that? Can I have a start up Chime on my iPad? I want one of those now. Yeah, hmm. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It, again, it's a signal that, yeah. you know, something is... Something is happening. So, um, okay, so we've reached that point where we talk about the pricing of the book and, and the availability, of course, is now, no matter when you see this, because the, Joe has released the first version pre release of um, a Big Sur. But uh, so, what are the details, Joe? The book costs $14.99 if you are buying it new and you have never before bought one of its predecessors for us. If uh, you if you buy this along with Take Control of iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, if you go to either of those book pages on our site, there's a, there's a special link where you can buy the bundle, those two books together for $16.99. Normally, the, you know, the, the, the Big Sur book is $14.99. The other one is 
1099, two of them together for 1699, it's, it's a pretty good deal. If, however, you had take control of Catalina or take control of Mavericks or any, any of the take control of some operating system, or in fact, if you had any of the upgrading titles, take control of upgrading to El Capitan or take control of upgrading to Panther from 2003, if you had any of those, then you qualify to get the new book for half price. So you can click the check for updates uh, little badge on your uh, uh, either either the check check sorry either either check the badge uh, click the badge on the top right corner of the PDF if you have the PDF or go to the uh, ebook extras area and the the end toward the end of the book if you have any other format there's a link, link that you can click and you'll go to an update page where you'll see an offer. Click this link and get the new book for half price. So uh, we 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 are trying to be as generous as we can, give anybody with any previous version of one of our books that talked about Mac OS a uh, half price upgrade to the new one, and uh, we hope you'll take advantage of it. Perfect, perfect. And of course, that's TakeControlBooks.com, where you go to get this book, you get Josh's Take Control of iPad OS and iOS 14, uh, you get Glenn Fleischman's Take Control of Zoom, uh, and a lot of other great books from a lot of great authors. Joe, thank you. This is uh, this has been enlightening. Um, I definitely learned some things that I didn't know, and so now I've got to go and dig through the book and see what else I didn't know as we get ready. And awesome. See see whether I want to do a, a day one. Big Sur upgrade or not. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Again, take control books to pick up all of Joe's wisdom along with everyone else, and we will be back next time. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.